what stage is on. There we go. All right. Now, today uh, I am going to be talk to Miles Routledge. Is that how you pronounce it? Routledge? Yes, mate. Absolutely. Yes. And he, I mean, many of us have been um, observing the events in Ukraine with great horror. And he's the person who saw them unfold and thought, I have to get down there as a, uh, I suppose, adventurer, danger chaser. I'm not sure what you call yourself. Um, um, and I, I, I um, yeah, I uh, what was going to say, oh, I, so I, I'm, I'm watching these events unfold and feeling very stressed mm -hmm. and uh, worried about it. But I'm sure not as stressed and worried as you are. So <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought maybe you could, you could um, tell us a little bit about what's been going on since you got there. And your assessment of the whole thing, I guess I wanted to talk to you about. And and thanks uh, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. No, thanks for having me on. So the first thing is you uh, said you don't know what I call myself. I would call myself retarded, most likely. And the second thing is with regards to what's going on, um, air raid sirens go off every hour. You have to run to the bunker. Um, you hear Russian um, bombardments going off, so you quickly have to duck behind a bed or just uh, accept death, basically, sometimes. Um, you see Ukrainian troops running around if you go out after curfew, which is 3 p.m. every single day till 8 a.m. Um, you either have a gun point at you or you're just asked to run into a building if you look normal. Uh, so for me, I always get interrogated three times yesterday by three separate divisions. So lovely stuff. Um, when I came out the shelter, um, things were on fire, uh, glass everywhere. Um, things were burning, buildings destroyed, rubble, complete chaos, basically. Wow, oh my God. So how long have you been there? So I was there for three weeks, and then I went away about three days before um, it actually began, so I came back home. Then the morning of the attacks, um, I woke up at 6 a.m. and then got on the plane and arrived about, mm, I'll say about four days ago. So I was about two days in. And I mean, does your family know? Do you tell your family when you're doing this? I just <laughs> I have to. Oh, thankfully, that. I have no family, thankfully. So with oh. me, I just kind of do my own thing and I have to worry about any family. My friends think it's hilarious and they encourage it. So, of course, I'm going to listen to them. Um, I'm sure they know what's best for me. <laughs> and so you feel a, a certain fearlessness, do you? I mean, you're not scared. Of, you're just flat out not scared of dying or? How I think you... I'll be scared if I wasn't in a war zone. I've got to admit, I'll be so bored. <laughs> and you, you, you were saying it's uh, safe. You feel? Do you still feel that it's safer than uh, Birmingham? Yeah, I was just walking down the street. The Ukrainian forces were like, "Get in, run, run!" And I was like, "I guess <laughs> it's fine for me." You know, um, I haven't felt in danger a little bit. I mean, nothing has exploded right next to me. I had uh, something go off about you know 70, 80 feet in front of me, but you know, then I just went the opposite direction. It was fine. Yeah, something going off like a. A bomb? Or... Basically, yeah. 70, 80 yeah, feet the, um, the mortars and the, you know, the uh, bombardments going on by the Russians. Sorry, you're in Kiev, right? Are you? No, no, I'm in Kharkiv now. So uh, oh, Kharkiv, the front lines, right, basically. Right. Yeah, a way right. worse place. But I was right. in Kiev originally, and now I'm going to go back there in about four days or so. Because they're, um, oh. they're saying we have, everyone has to evacuate, even civilians. So lovely stuff. And what, will they transport them? transport you out themselves, or...? No, no, I just booked a train ticket. The media's been lying about it too. So the media says, oh, no one can get a train, but I've just booked one um, a few days in advance. No issues. Really? So you can travel about. Okay. And uh, who, who, the other people you're with, are they. Uh, are, you, are you in like. You're in a hotel, is it? Or. Yeah, basically just went on um, just went on Airbnb and just messaged one going, oh, are you still open? And they go, sadly, yeah. <laughs> is, it a um, of, is it a hotel full of danger tourists like you? or <laughs> No, it's full of, I'm the only person here, I believe. Um, oh. I haven't heard a single person and there's only a few rooms, I think only six. So I'm just kind of here thinking, mm, what else? So the lady's really kind who runs it. She knocks on the door, goes, do you want some food? But, you know, I'm just doing my own thing. So she was really worried when I didn't come back the other day and I spent the night at the um, at the military base with the soldiers, with the special forces. You did? You went into Yes. Them? So, so um, I was basically chilling with them. They were like, oh, um, why do you come here? They're interrogating me. I showed them my Twitter. I showed them all the details of everything about what's going on and what I do. They have always hilarious but suspicious at the same time. So they, they joked I was a fed. And of course I'm not. So, yeah. 100%. Um, 
And then they said, oh, it's too dangerous to go outside. Um, you have to stay here the night. Come eat food with us. And I go, yeah, sure. Have a meal with you guys. They also armed me up just in case. He said, you know, here's a gun. Um, if something happens, you know, you can pop off a few rounds if you want. I go, sure, okay. What? And then um, we're eating really? food. Then suddenly we hear uh, jets overhead and uh, bombardments going off. We we all just flip our tables and just start running basically to the basement, and we just go into one giant pile. And the biggest tragedy of them all, I lost my headphones, my earphones, so I have no drip oh. now. <laughs> well, that's tragic, right? That is a great. Tragedy. I got them. I got them a week ago. It's a complete piss take. <laughs> yeah, I might just tell Amazon we didn't arrive, and I waited seven days or something. Well, for someone who turned out to not be a real aristocrat, you have actual aristocratic. Um... <laughs> Airs in in some ways that's kind of how do you think uh, irreverence I guess reminds me of uh, I remember reading model guy some a lord an actual lord somebody or other and what was he he was getting he was at his tailor's yes and the ta- uh, getting a suit made and the tailor said what's your address and he goes don't you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like the man <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a hilarious attitude, attitude to life. But um, I mean, the thing is very real and stressful. Like I'm, mean, I'm just as a far out, uh, you know, someone who's not anywhere near it. I find it incredibly stressful just seeing what's going on. So you're immune to that kind of stress, are you? To the, you know, yeah. The so of we the war and the, the outcomes. Yeah, completely. Like um, when what happened is when we ran for like a solid 15 seconds, like you completely sprinted for our lives to the basements. Everyone started piling on top of one another. Um, civilians go on bottom, of course, and then the soldiers go on top to protect you just in case. Cause I didn't have a helmet on, and when I was underneath, I heard the soldier breathing for like you know 15, 20 seconds, heavy breathing, like rapid. <laughs> but with me, I was just I realized I was slowly breathing uh, very calmly. And I realized at that moment, this guy's scared crapless. And with me, I'm just I'm just enjoying it to some degree. Um, small part of me is, I've got to admit, it's it's pure adrenaline. It's a mm. great experience. It's a great experience. And are you worried or is there, like, say, if the city falls and the Russians sort of take over, are you, what do you do then? You know, do you have mm. a, I guess you're just playing it by ear as, so the hotel does have a printer. So what I would do is honestly just print out an A4 sheet of paper with a Russian flag on it and just wave it around. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I would do it. And then I would just be like, mm, uh, Ukraine, please. And then they'll be like, hey. And it would let me pass through, I guess. Apparently, if you're, you're um, in Russian territory now, as a, as an outside, like a British person, and you're a civilian, you're allowed to basically stay in the country for 24 hours before getting out. So I'd quickly have to hop on the biggest train ride of my life. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So like, okay, sure. what, what, what can I ask? What, like, I don't know if I, I should get into, I should probably, I won't, there's no point asking you like, you know, what do you think or hope or suspect might happen? But I mean, that's, do you, uh, do you have any, do you have any hope that they, you know, say would have a chance of holding out? I don't think so. No, um, because at the moment the Russians are using all this old Soviet gear and all the people that have been captured and conscripted and everything um, who are roughly on the front lines aren't their best soldiers, I've got to admit. Um, So I believe they're kind of just getting out of old inventory, putting pressure on to see if they don't have to put in more resources. And then if they see too much resistance, they might just start the serious stuff. I mean, they, they move the nukes near the front line, which obviously they're not going to use the nukes, right? It's over Ukraine. Well, I hope not. This is my main thing. It's yeah. like people say, oh, obviously it's not going to happen. They can you do this and that. But I mean, I was reading yeah, it, recently yeah. about, about like, say, in the 80s when there was, you know, in in the first Cold War, you know, some of their policies and things. And, you know, it sounded like, you know, they're Russians. They don't, even this business that they've done here, like, it's a, it's a prime example. They give you a warning or two, and then you think, whatever. And if you keep prodding them, they just act. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, they're pretty autistic, I've got to admit. Um, I hopefully don't think they will. I think it's honestly just propaganda. I think um, because it was it was announced so quickly that their nukes were on on um, transport and it didn't come from official means, just from people filming it down the road. So I honestly think they're just doing it for um, to put pressure on Ukraine, NATO and everything, saying, look, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, Surrender, basically. Yeah, but then on the opposite side, you've got the autism of the West on Twitter, and you see all these people, these bulldog people, these armchair warriors, just screaming, "Ah, oh, it's you know, we must, we must invade, and we must send all the NATO troops, and uh, you know, cut off their airspace." And and I mean, that's really 
that's the kind of thing where I'm like that could bring nukes into it. I think. Mm. Um, I honestly think. Are, yeah, I honestly just think give Ukraine some nukes. That will settle it because then Ukraine can go hey hey any further. Big bit. Well, that's big the reason. That, that's part of the reason they invaded. I think is because Ukraine was talking about getting nukes when they were they were going to join NATO and get some nukes, and that caused oh, yeah, the invasion. Yeah. Yeah, I so would I just, know. I would just secretly sneak them in and be like, "Look, now we got sneak nukes." Them in. <laughs> and maybe that, that can be your next adventure. You can sneak a nuke in. Well, people say I'm glowing, but not from radioactive material. So, <laughs> <sighs> Jesus, even like even just this frank or joking talk, you wonder like soon if it's like how much we can say. You know, I mean, my live stream might cut gone. to a white to a white explosion. We never know. Yeah, so you got. I mean, so you're not really in the thick of it at this hotel, like the front lines of the Kark are Kark Kharkov are like at the outskirts of the city still. Is that the way it is? Or they get uh, unless, unless you see tanks being stored in the basement of the hotel, you're probably not really in danger. Like you know, no, no, danger. honestly, I hear, I hear, the, I feel the vibrations from the bombings. I can walk about seven minutes and I can find a giant crater in the ground. Like everywhere in this area is at risk. Basically, they're usually they're usually hitting um, military assets, of course. But there have been some rogue civilian deaths because of um, miscalculations or misunderstandings of the locations. So you know, you never know if there's a Ministry of Defense next door that I don't know about. I might be uh, turned to pick mist. Well, I heard, I heard it's from some of it is from the type of missiles they use. The I forget what they're called. I want to say Smirch or something, but isn't that like the uh, is that from James Bond or something? I don't know. The type of missiles <laughs> um, they drop a part of the missile or something as it flies over. And like, yeah, I, heard, I heard a story. I heard a story of some civilians getting hit by these, like just dropping, like they're the size of a person, like the back end of the missile or something. So oh, what a depressing way to go! <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, there's many depressing ways to go, but I mean, it, <laughs> instantaneous is probably the best way to go, as a, as yeah, a, as Kenny Rogers would say, <laughs> in the gambler. Yeah, no, no, my luck. Yeah. I'm gonna slip on banana and crack my head open. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's yeah. That would be a very Greek ending. That's like Jason from Jason and the Argonauts. He died because, like, he, after all his adventures, he sat beside his uh, ship and a, and a board from it fell off and hit, hit him in the head. Really? Oh wow! Okay. The final irony <laughs> of the adventure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to, die, to die. So to die like a normal person. Um. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna go. You're gonna head off to to Kiev. You said in in a couple. Yes, I've had some people message me going, "Hey, look, my grandma, my." my friend or my dog or my graphics card even is in um, this location. Can you help me? And most of them I can't just because of locations either behind the enemy lines or there's just no transport links there, which just be impossible to get into. Um, or we just don't speak the language. I won't be able to communicate with them. But there's some in Kiev that I may be able to help get to a bus or a train or something. So maybe I can do some stuff there. I also went to the... Um, the game studio where they're storing the um, Stalker 2, if you know about it. It's a game where um, it's basically just surviving in Chernobyl. Um, and the entire team based in uh, Kiev have left. So last time I went there and knocked on the door and windows, but no one answered if it was meant to be staff there. So I might just go back again and do like a little heist, maybe. Would you like to go to Chernobyl? That'd be quite... That'd be good. Oh, I have Did been, you? yes. I went, I went roughly about two and a half weeks ago, but if it's open again, I would go. Issue is when I headed up that direction from Kiev last time, I got um, I got surrounded by soldiers on live stream who pointed guns at me. I was like, "What are you doing?" And I pulled out my press badge that I made in Microsoft Paint, um, <laughs> and they, they they were like, "Oh, okay. Um, no worries. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's okay." Yeah. Well, that's a good trick, I guess, because they think you're Western press, and they probably want. I guess do it with the. I don't know. I yeah, sure. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of bigger than some Western press, which I think is hilarious. So, you know, I'll just keep it up until I actually do become official press. <laughs> well, you seem to make the press every now and again. You, I think I saw you in a, some kind of news item there over your comment about Birmingham. Anyway, it's being safer than Birmingham. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, when the press calls me up, they basically go, "Oh, you know, we want to find out a real story, blah blah blah." And I go, "No, no, straight up, mate. You can you can literally sensationalize it. I understand how it works. Just link my." Uh, my Twitter, use the law, weren't Lord Miles or Mr. Miles or anything, and you know, um, can you pay me? Blah blah blah. And they always fulfill the promises and they always sensationalize it. I and mean, they're always kinder to you when they don't have to put up BS of, oh, we really want to uh, tell the truth on what you're doing out there. Oh, we really want to highlight the good in you, you know, that stuff. Well, if you're determined to say, I dare say it will get dangerous, more and more dangerous. 
Um, there's no doubt. And um, it sounds like you are. Yeah. Are you are you going to stay till it, till it's over? Like, is that your? Mm, I don't think so. No, I've got I've got a big trip where I've got to fly out on the ninth or the tenth, I believe. So yeah. I need to be out by then. But you never know. I might stay for a lifetime if things go badly. If you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah. That's definitely possible. Um, yeah. So. Are you, uh, I guess so you're going to be basically stuck in the hotel apart from your trips to Kiev and you were able to take a train. I didn't know that people could just get, hop on and still get trains. I mean, you imagine these things. Yeah, I mean, the uh, only thing what is the war, but I guess there's there's still a functioning sort of society going on in the background. People, like trucks are delivering food to shops and stuff still. And things, yeah, yeah, there's there's some emergency stuff. So the issue is every single store is packed with food, but only out of a hundred stores is only say two stores open maybe. Um, so I should simplify that fraction, never mind. But um, those two stores, you have queues that go around the block and every other store, like the micro kiosks, uh, the little standalone kiosks that are placed around Ukraine, you can see the food directly in the window. The owner's just gone, I'm not going to be a part of this, no thank you, and just locked the door and ran away. So some right. people have broken into these because they just a layer of glass punched it or you mm. know, kicked open the door and taken some food so they could feed themselves. With myself, I've seen some of these and half the shop's raided, half it's still there, which is surprising. So I kind of go in and then when everyone's watching me go in there, I think you're always actually doing it. I'll just pull out, say, um, like a 50 or something and just leave it there and just go, I'm still paying for it. It's like self-checkout. <laughs> so I'm being ethical about this. But um, well, Wartime self-checkout, yeah. Well, that's nice yeah, to know being ethical about it and leaving the money. Have you seen, I mean, I don't know if it's happening in Kharkov, I've seen scenes of the looters being tied up with like rope and saran wrap and like uh, spanked with... <laughs> Sticks, yeah, right? yeah, they basically get beaten up because they're just scummy. Um, so there's been a lot of people that have been taking computer parts from offices and everything because they're not the world, most well defended. So when I was, I'll get it one second, when I was um, placed on a mission to go to the front lines, a friend had a computer there and he forgot his graphics card so he couldn't play games whilst in Poland. So he wanted me to bring his graphics card with him. Um, so I retrieved it. I kind of semi broke into his house and got it out. Um, yeah. He gave me permission, of course. But then when I was going through all these checkpoints, they were checking my bags, thinking I was a spy or you know, oh. someone dodgy. And they saw yeah. this random graphics card in a bag full of you know supplies. They oh. just thought I you know, stole it off some uh, someone or something. Yeah. And what happened? You talked your way out of it. Yeah, basically. Press badge, smile, British charm, that type of stuff. <laughs> Well, you sly, sly dog. Um, I mean, you're you're much more cheery about the whole thing than I imagined. I, I should have. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's all. You're really you're, you're you're literally having a good time. Yeah, the press are usually like, oh no, it's it's the worst thing. Everyone's constantly pissing themselves. Just it's constant stream of piss wherever they walk, and then everyone's just crying constantly, and uh, you know everyone's just shaking out of fear. And being behind the whole world, this is what I'm doing. This is the way I'm. I'm not even there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone, everyone I'm, I'm feels too, just I'm chaos. Too, but... I'm getting too many updates on Telegram on, all the time. It's like, oh, this is happening now. Oh, this is happening. And I, <laughs> you know? my um, my army friends, they basically just tell me, hey, look, um, we all make jokes here. We're all trying to make a good time out of it because you know, if you're fighting for the enemy, you need some downtime. And you know, um, playing Clash of Clans isn't going to do it. So. These people, they have fun, they make jokes, dog jokes too, it's great. Um, and everyone does the same, even the civilians. Um, the children are holding up better than most Westerners, I imagine. Um, in the West, you say something like, I don't know, um, there's only two genders and some some person cries on Twitter. But then yeah. there's these four-year-old girls walking through the tunnels, hearing explosions and just like, oh, I'll dodge it. You know, they're just <laughs> playing a game almost. It's hilarious. It's yeah, it's adorable. Well, I wouldn't wish wish war on children, but you're right that in the West we definitely need to toughen up a bit. And oh, the more exposure you have to at least some levels of danger, the more tough you. That's the whole problem with those people, like you said, about the two gender, whatever. Uh, you know, the snowflakes yeah, yeah. or whatever, uh, that word is that term's a bit overused, but uh, they just have no exposure to proper either danger or just the remotest harshness. I guess or like uh, yeah, exactly. they were utterly spoiled. I suppose. Yeah, when you have no harshness in your life, you make up your own harshness and your own demons, which I think is hilarious. Um, you know, you're meant to have all these comforts in the world, but these people are depressed and miserable. And, you know, the people over here, they're smiling, they're sharing food and creating community of strangers. It's great to see. They think it's bringing out the best in people. 
I don't wish war happened, of course not, but uh, if it has to happen like it is now, um, everyone's making the best out of the situation, thankfully. Well, we're caught in it now, and it could be, obviously, I I mean, I I don't know if we should call it a world war already. I'm not sure, but it's it's certainly a a world cold war again, I think. Yeah. Um, I want to see if if Finland gets evaded. Um, There's some rumors of Russian troops on their border building up more than before. So if that happens, I'm I'm running to Finland and filming that oh as well. God, that'd be super hard. Oh, yeah, if that happens, that's definitely World War Three and that's definitely possible nukes involved. Like if, if they do that, that is crazy. And I really don't wouldn't expect them to. Like from my point of view, what has happened was, you know, am I even allowed to say this? I don't know. But NATO provocation really pushed them into it. And from my point of view, everyone like in the Western on Twitter um, they're all just saying, oh, he just, they think he's Genghis Khan and he wants land and he just invaded for no reason. But I mean, I've, I remember watching, seeing the news and seeing the the threats from like people in NATO and saying, we're putting these bases here and nothing you can do. And I, I know he was warning them. So I always feel like yeah. someone there should have some accountability for what happened. He also Russians said, he, yeah, NATO yeah. also said they weren't going to expand, um, uh, expand NATO at all and made promises for like 20, 27 years. And then he constantly gets expanded constantly, and he goes, "Wait, wait, wait! You know, you're surrounding me. I need some, yeah. uh, I need a buffer zone." And then Ukraine goes, "Well, you know, we're going to join, maybe." And they go, "Yeah, we need to act now because the whole funnel of Europe, you know, um, Russia's borders too, but too well. If uh, NATO topples them, like with every other country they've done, like um, Libya and stuff." Yeah. So th- at least this can be construed at some angle as defensive or whatever but if, he, if there was an invasion of finland or sweden or something that would be like that would be that would be then they're right and you know there's some kind of insanity going on because i don't know that's that would be something else so i, yeah, I would exactly. be very very surprised if that happened i'm just gonna see what happens either way i still haven't picked a side um but you know i'm just treating everyone as individuals if they help me lovely people if they shoot me they're the enemy regardless so who was shooting at you you said someone was shooting at you yeah um when sorry oh i thought you said that am i wrong uh, maybe oh, I, I so, just... someone put a gun to me and there was also one when a yeah. bombardment came uh with like 80 feet to me yeah roughly right so that's the so yeah no one you weren't in like a shootout or anything i guess you wouldn't be uh you know unless you're literally your position you're in is surrounded and you're for some reason part of part of a war we, we a were having um things shot at the actual um site we were at but at the same time we were just kind of you know, ducking and avoiding it because it was really easy to avoid i've got to admit it was you know huge open ground and i just kind of ducked around a little bit and made my way across um and every once in a while you hear gunshots they don't go overhead fully but they you know they're quite close you know if you were say 30 feet somewhere else you might get hit um but basically war so um i didn't expect any less and is there any other British people with you or Western Europeans or? Yeah, there was this one guy. I, I met him in Kharkiv when I was there about three weeks ago. He's roughly on the front lines in these massive uh, council flats, um, you know, equivalent of um, um, the old Soviet architecture. He's in these massive uh, tower blocks right at the top where missiles are flying and everything. And he just goes, yeah, I don't, I just don't want to go away. I just want to stay here. I just don't really care. <laughs> You know, he's like, oh, we're running out of food, water, internet's terrible. I haven't spoken to my family. I literally have nothing here. But I'm just going to play Clash of Clans on my phone. He's just chilling all day. He just watches uh, YouTube videos all day. He spends like 10 minutes loading one video. And then he just he just sits in his room all day, nothing else. Um, so he's yes. British. He doesn't want to come home. I kind of admire it, but I just don't know what his game is because he's not like, making money off the old content. Yeah. At least you're chasing adrenaline. That's just like he's a decadent Westerner to the point of like ap- extreme apathy. <laughs> yeah, he's either just movie. really base where he just doesn't care and wants to stay home, or he's just maybe depressed, maybe, but I just doubt it. Um, he was giving me a tour, and he what he was saying is his sleep schedule was so screwed up because he used to work night shifts. Um, I think he used to work remotely for a different part of the world, so he'd have to work night shifts. Mm. And when he did, um, he had a different sleep schedule, so he sleep throughout the day. So he hasn't been able to get food in like five solid days. He only has like a few eggs left and stuff um, because all the shops open at like 8 a.m. and close at, you know, 1 p.m. And he wakes up at like 2. He's like, damn it, I'm so late. <laughs> so he <just> never gets <laughs> anything. <laughs> well, he doesn't sound like a genius. I mean, when you're too... When you, can, when, you, you, when you can't even raise your nose from the video games when the war is going on around you, that's something else. Like, yeah, exactly. He's just watching with fireworks. He's like, 
<laughs> well, there's every kind of personality in the world, I guess you can imagine. I mean, I can and I can sympathize with what you're doing. I recall, I mean, I didn't do anything like what you're doing at all. <laughs> I was, good, I was never good. near near to a war, but I recall the joys of um, intentionally putting myself at risk, but particularly when I was more your age. That's really a young man's thing. There's great joy in doing outrageous things, and um, uh, to be honest, you never feel more alive as when you're in danger. So that's part of the other. That's the that's the other good thing about it in a way. But um, oh, for sure, yeah. You know when yeah. you have like um, a boring out of body experience, and you just you can't remember, say, a few days ago because it was just an ordinary day. You know, nothing important. It feels like every other day is like that now. But even the wars are like that for me. So if I if I'm not directly getting shot at, I'm like, oh, it's just a normal day. And it just blends in the background. But for everyone on Twitter and social media, it's apparently the biggest thing to them. But for me, it's just, yeah, you know. So what, what I, I don't know why. Birmingham? What what goes on in Birmingham that's so much more dangerous? You go out in the streets and you get mugged and attacked. Well, or... <laughs> if you walk down a certain part, certain parts of night, you will probably get stabbed, mugged. Um, yeah, if you're a woman, you know, different things if you catch my drift. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very dodgy and you don't feel safe at night. The amount of times people have tried to mug me in Birmingham is insane. Even in the city centre during daylight, uh, you know, there's people on drugs, homeless people on drugs just walking around. Um, I've seen a random girl just uh, walking down the street, you know, doing, minding her own business. Homeless person on something just walks up to her and just sucker punches her in the face. And they just runs away and the police just start running after him. <laughs> it's bad. And if you look yeah. for crime rates between uh, Ukraine and Birmingham, you know, it's certain towns, pretty much Birmingham's about five times worse for crimes in every single um, demographic, apart from bombings, <laughs> I imagine, but, you know, still pretty bad. Oh, Jesus, well, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, uh, morbidly funny, but, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm not surprised in a way. Um, so you're well used to it, yeah, this is your... Yeah, like, right, just... like, um, like literally five seconds ago, I just heard, like, a small boom didn't feel a vibration, but, you know, it's probably one kilometer away, one mile away, roughly. And I didn't flinch. It's just like, oh, it's a bomb going off. Safe old. Yeah, that would be scary, all right, I guess the bombs. I've seen some footage of bombs. I saw one that looked like a small nuclear bomb. I don't know what the hell it was. And I think it was yeah. Kharkov as well. I don't know where someone was looking out their window. Maybe you saw the same one, but I was like, it was like giant mushroom cloud, and then it, like, pushed oh, the yeah, retro one of the, big the guys. One of the big boys, yeah, whatever they are. And I know um, I knew a guy, a Spanish guy, who was on the train when there was that bombing on the train in uh, Spain. Uh, I forget what I forget what, the, what it was called, but he was not that far from a bomb that went off. And I remember he he told me, this is how he explained it. He said it wasn't like the blast or the fire or whatever. He said there was a pressure that pushed through him, and it was all he could do. It was the hardest thing in his entire life to stay alive as that pressure came pushed through him. Is, this is how he described it. So, yeah, you can get like. burst lungs and I think it's, it's yeah. Bizarre. He he burst his eardrum and stuff, and I, maybe his lung went too. I mean, yeah, I think that's something I do. I don't fear it, but it's a concern of mine. If I, you know, lose my hearing or lose my eyes or something happens, like you know, from some shrapnel or some glass, that's gonna be devastating. But I hope so you don't. It, um, you don't. You don't see a situation where you're forced to like pick up a gun and. You know, yeah, maybe. Or... You know, if I if I see Russians and there's a gun right next to me, I would easily put up a gun and shoot them, no issue. But uh, you know, if if I'm on the way out and you know, they aren't causing any issues for me, I'll be like, eh, it's fine, I'll just leave it. Because I still haven't picked a side either way. I'm just documenting. I'm keeping neutral. I'm like um, I'm like Switzerland of this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I am sort of too. But like I said, I really do ultimately blame NATO for for kicking it off. So, yeah. and I think you have to hold it. You have, like no one's going to hold them accountable, <laughs> not in the West, anyway. So, no one's. Thank you. Well, if, if like... you catch my, if you catch my drift, and if I said, uh, you know, uh, Russia was provocated, provocated by the West, and you know they're pushing the uh, whole Ukrainian narrative to basically, uh, you know, um, make everyone on their side, you know, social media and all this stuff, and all the your normies are e eating it up. Uh, mm. You know, you must think, you know, who really caused this whole thing. And, uh, you know, there must be a reason why Russia invaded. But if you ask any of those questions or present those normal points, uh, the social media hall goes a little bit crazy. So if you catch my drift, I haven't mm -hmm. picked a side yet. No, I know it's hard. And I know people there. I know a guy in Kharkov. I've been talking to him. He, nice guy. He was uh, submitting some writing to me for, I'm trying to put together a, another book, which is, like takes submissions and you publish them. So he, he was doing something. And he's been explaining to me his point of view. And obviously he hates them and he's, you know, 
I've been explaining why why I can't just side with him and say I'm totally on your side. And he's under, I've been I've been able to do it without like falling out with him. He understands my point of view. I totally understand his. Like I, I believe a lot of them sort of hate Russians already. You know, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's not a good relationship going on. I mean, for obviously there's been other invasions mm -hmm. and everything else. But obviously the blood is very bad now. Like I, he showed me the one recently. I guess some church, an Orthodox, a um, Ukrainian Orthodox church in was it Moscow got sort of trashed there just today, I think. Mm. And so you know things are the the, the blood is ir, ir, uncoverably unretrievably uh, bad. Perhaps I don't know. And so I saw the the Russians offered a deal there today, which I thought sounded reasonable. But then all the bulldogs on Twitter were like, "Oh, you can't, you know, you can't." Yeah, uh, no surrender. They offer them the Donbass. No, what do they say? Russia will take the Crimea part uh, parts of. I, I don't remember exactly exactly. Yeah, they said. Just... Yeah, they'll say they said they'll take parts of it where they invaded, and uh, you know they'll create autonomous zones or they'll just say it's theirs. And I think that's reasonable to some degree. Um, so then they're just saying no, all all our battle, we you either take the entire country or we just all die. You know. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're being completely surrounded. Like you're there. It doesn't seem to me like they have a great playing hand, you know, to be making yeah. demands like that. So maybe we, yeah, maybe I mean, we couldn't speculate on this. I don't know. I don't want to be. They, they quite literally let out prisoners with uh, violent histories, any combat experience, any uh, tactical or medical experience. They let them out and gave them weapons, basically, uh, just to fight them for a line. So that's pretty desperate. You never know. There yeah, might yeah. be some World War II war criminal still alive. <laughs> that's so. Um, <laughs> That's been given guns and said fight World War Three. Yeah, I mean that that would be a stretch. This person would be like, yeah, a, a, yeah. a mummy basically, I'd like going around. Yes, a hundred thirty year old man with a weird, fit but um, familiar mustache comes out. You know. Yeah, you should fight him and help him out. Put him on your shoulders, and he can shoot his machine gun from your shoulders. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Blaster. Yeah, of course. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, that's, um, I mean, you have to admire them, their uh, patriotism and their willingness to die. Like this guy that my, I'm talking to, he is willing to die. I mean, he, he's willing to, and I'm, you know, and that's fine if they want to do that. But I don't appreciate the the bulldogs in the West, Western countries who know nothing really about it, just what they've seen on Twitter. And they're, mm -hmm. they, so someone put it very uh, eloquently today. What was it? They're willing to sacrifice every U Ukrainian. <laughs> you know, it's true. Like, but, that, um, I, I don't country. see someone created a change.org petition I, I just i think that's retarded i just don't see the point of it um all the russian governments go see the change.org petition go oh uh, this 18 year old white girl said no war let's let's back up guys and then you've got uh, people changing emojis on their twitter bios and i just think it's not gonna make a difference i honestly think if all these people just didn't do any of these movements it wouldn't have one single impact on the war yeah, and those the yeah. uh, with you, have you seen the OnlyFans whores um, offering oh, fifty yeah. percent off? <laughs> wow, that's great! great. It's more bargain. <laughs> that means you could buy double now. So oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> So I can jerk off at half price in my in the bunker oh, while I'm. <laughs> sort of, you know, I could I could fly bargain. there, basically get embodied in history, and get a Ukrainian wife, or I can take the easy route and watch uh, BBC porn. <laughs> BBC, oh, they're the worst. I see they've and they've uh, back in England they've completely outlawed uh, Russia Today and all that they've you're not they won't let them let the signal come in I don't know what they've done but so they I mean this their infantile ways of going about it it really annoys me or like walking walking out of when they all the EU uh, the Eurocrats walked out of the of the meeting with Lavrov was it or something uh, just their behavior like for God's sake just be adults and like try to deal with it like people are dying I'd like to see it I'd love to see peace and the you know some way to yeah. You know, find oh, a deal. It, let's let's yeah. be realistic, for God's sake. They're trying to sensationalize it. It's like, um, you know, Trudeau, basically the, uh, oh. yeah, the, yeah, the uh, Canadian pig. Um, he stated, "Oh, we will ban all imports of Russian oil into our country, but uh, Canada doesn't import any Russian oil." So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's Europe that's going to be hard hit now. Europe's going to get these shortages in oil and gas, and even in things Germany. like cattle feed and things. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, I'm sure it'll reach us over in the far west in UK, Ireland, and stuff. I'm sure we'll be feeling the effects of this. You know, if it, it, this is even if we're not pulled into an, an all out war ourselves, that, you know, we're going to feel the uh, privation. I'm sure it's going to, everything's going to be affected now by this. But oh, because yeah. of some NATO jerk offs, I mean, maybe, maybe they were taking orders from the top. Maybe it was just like a, a couple of like, you know, people pushing sort of, you know, rogue. I remember seeing, like I said, I remember seeing a couple of, there was like a woman, I can't remember her name, and she was like really being very aggressive in her talk and like 
you know, just because of possibly just because of the, the chaos of that, of like some managerial type who doesn't really know what they're doing, you know, and thinks the world works, thinks that Twitter is reality or something. Oh, woman <laughs> moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, as well, when I met some soldiers, oh, sorry, when I met some journalists in Kiev, like before I was leaving, about two days before I was leaving originally, uh, they were all getting drunk in a bar, basically, and they were stating, oh, we're, we need to sensationalize this, we need to post this, we need to talk about this, use this keyword, because I'll catch on, and it's, just, it's terrible. And then, uh, behold, four days later, I, I think, I can't remember what the keyword was, but I saw it in like five newspapers, and I was like, Mm, yeah, see, so that's how the whole narrative is created. So they're just lying most of the time. Um, and with NATO too, they're doing the same thing. Like you said, they're just uh, creating some sort of um, reality TV show to some degree. Yeah. So you said yeah. you've been in touch with Western press since you've been there, or are they even yeah. there with you? Have you seen them? Yeah, are they there? Most, well, they don't dare come here. There's no Western press in this area. Oh. Um, they're in Kiev. They're sitting on the safe parts. Uh, you know. Yeah, five miles from front lines and they're going look at this there's a piece of rubble on the ground look look um five miles that way there's uh there's bullet shots you can hear them very faintly and i'm just here you know yeah, yeah. because i remember back in the day they really were not like that i like they not only now are they like lying and censorious and just fulfilling their little narrative they don't even like i remember you'd see you know be lots of stories of guys in the vietnam war or other wars and any kind of action the press guy would be risking his life he'd be out there with his camera you know oh, yeah. they just don't even do that anymore you're doing yeah, that no, like, it's a whole insurance thing i imagine it's just so dumb um and another thing too about this whole thing popping off of russia russia's the um one country well there's a few countries but it's one of the countries uh, that's civilized that actually doesn't have um, a rothschild's bank or any of the main banking systems um right right yeah so you never know yes <laughs> Yeah, but we I think, to, I think we, we can't talk about that too much. Of course, but yes. of course, I understand. But yes, no, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. We both mysteriously went missing in a in a few days, and we found suicide <laughs> with two gunshots to the back of the head. Oh. That's it. Yeah, you dragged me into your adventure land. Uh, that, that's Thinking it. my skin's fairly rambling. At least I'll feel the excitement of my youth again. I'll feel the last minute excitement as they come for me. I'll be like, ah, oh, I'm having a great time. <laughs> Thank you. I remember with me. I remember what, I wouldn't like go to war zones, but I remember we do better in Canada where I grew up. We do rock climbing, and I remember there's a couple of situations where we went too steep, too far, just with your hands, like free climbing or whatever. Mm. And I remember there'd be a few times we went. Like I remember one time in particular, and we were terrified. We crawled into like a cave thing, and we couldn't go up. We, to go up, we would have to do do it with our like legs dangling. So oh, yeah. and the way the way we'd already done that a little bit on the way up just to get there. I don't know what the hell we were thinking. And we sat there for like until it began to get dark, just like there was no cell, there was no mobile phones then. So we were like, just like, you know, I wish we could get airlifted out of here, but we had to make a decision and crawl backwards back down again. But I do remember mm -hmm. feeling, I remember that, that time, I don't know what, there's been other times I obviously risked my life, but I do remember the feeling of there's a, especially when you get through it and there's a great achievement at the end, but I, even as you're doing it, I remember that's another, I think it was a, uh, another stupid anecdotal story. I don't know why I'm rambling up my stupid ass stories, but I remember I knew that's this guy. Story. Well, there's, there's, I knew this guy. I worked at a when I was I lived in Vancouver, and I worked at a shop that sold totem poles. And there mm -hmm. was this guy there. He was half black and half Native Indian, and he would sit there making the bento boxes. He carved them out of the cedar wood boxes. But he was mm -hmm. an enormous guy, and he had been in jail like a lot. <laughs> and I remember him. He was he was the one who would describe to me. I was like, why why do you, I would ask him why do you do all these harsh things and like how did you get in so much trouble? And he would his excuse was that. You never feel more alive than when you're in danger. <laughs> Good <Yeah>. man. <laughs> so, in, at least in your sense, you're just risking your own life. You're not doing anything. Yeah, you know, if I've always like yeah. pissing myself in the corner, going, "Oh, help, help me, get me out," I'm just like, no. Here's the thing, too. Um, someone, someone criticized me with my last trip to uh to Afghanistan, my first trip. So, mm, some bombing going off. You hear it, but uh, they said I took a seat on a plane despite uh it being not a civilian plane for Afghanistan residents. But I was thinking about that, and I thought, well. There's no flights out here and there's only evacuation trains and buses. There's no actual commercial uh, trains out from Lviv, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to walk from Ukraine in any other side to any other country pretty much um, because there's no transport links there. So I'm generally thinking about going to Lviv and then just walking about 50 miles to the uh, Polish border, getting let through mm -hmm. and then uh, you know just getting a train. It will take about a day and a half to walk 50 miles, I imagine. 
I'll just sleep yeah. on the streets if I have to. I'm fine a bit. Jesus, really? So you better be, you're going to have to be careful. Like, you just random, random who knows what, you know? I mean, well, imagine, you, imagine me, like, um, consider what's happened there. And like you say, maybe the people are overall more civilized. But say, imagine if in Birmingham they gave out an AK-47 to all, every character in the street. Yeah. Like these type of people are maybe roaming around, not just, you know, you might just not, you might not have trouble from soldiers. It could be some, it could be anybody. Yeah, it's the same thing, honestly. Um, and plus he might just see me walking and go, hey, this guy's trying to sneak out. He's a Ukrainian male. He's not fighting while well, a coward. But, oh, uh, you know, it's yeah. not my fight, of course. So if I, uh, there's videos of them being basically beaten up or even shot. So when I'm doing it, I'm going to have to walk with passport on hand, have my lanyard hanging out. Um what I might also do is uh, I might have to sleep in the street too overnight. It's freezing outside, but I'll just make you do. Have you got a sleeping bag? No. No, I wouldn't have enough room to carry it. And to be fair, I wasn't suspecting it would get to this point. I thought um, it would be a very – I wouldn't. I didn't think it would be a full-out war. I thought it would be uh, small and regional, um, but still interesting. But uh, this, this whole thing going on, it seems a bit more uh, real than it is. And between you and me, I've had people contact me who are from the border, who have just about gone across going, hey, the refugee camps are terrible. There's rapings going on. There's some muggings. The people are, like, stealing off one another. Uh, there's fighting. People have guns. So they've formed their own little militias and have done some bullying in the local communities. You know, it's getting bad, like any other refugee camp, if you give them so much panic. Um, so you never know what might happen. <laughs> Yeah, and it's going to be going to be even colder there than it is here, right? I'm um, obviously it's. Is it oh yeah, um, I think over here it's around negative two, maybe. Let me just give double check. Uh, well, I don't think you'll be sleeping at all by the sounds of that. You'll be you just stay up all night, no? How it's roughly negative now? three, um, but sometimes it peaks at one, so that's fine. Unless you can light a fire, you can go off the road and light a fire, I guess. Or I could, I could. So would that not be scary? Would you not feel scared doing that? Like when you're there alone and lighting a fire in in this. In, while we're uh, going on. I would finally, yeah. I would kind of, I would kind of sigh a uh, breath of relief and go, oh, no, no women, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> no women. No, I, I would be like, okay, well, this is the ultimate intel. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, well, it's cold, but you know, I could find a way to make do. The fire can maybe be fine. To be fair, the, it, because it's snowing and raining, the fire's not going to be dry, so it's going to be a crap fire. Um, and yeah, maybe I can't get too much Kindle, and if I go too far into the forest, they think I'm a troop or something and shoot me, so I have to stay visible. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to suck, and I'm going to be cold, my feet might get wet, especially if it's raining, uh, there'll be mud underneath my feet, so I'll just wake up with numb hands and numb feet, like usual, in most situations, because it's not the first time I've done something like this. Um, but, you know, it'll suck for one night, and I just keep on moving, because I'm not going to just suddenly go, well, it sucks now, what do I do? I just, I just give up. <laughs> No, I did just keep moving, and that's what uh, West is uh, not really good at uh, actually persevering with things, especially. Uh, well, we used I don't to want to sound like an old man, but you know, this generation, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not an example of that, obviously. And like, we used to be we used to be the best at it, and generally, we would be and are if um, they're in the right conditions. Like, someone like yourself now is armored against the pause, or how should we put it, the you know, the attitudes of the West that make you weak. So you should sue, so, and you're still very young. So you should just do nothing but get stronger and stronger, really. Yeah, That's all you need is to, to be armed against the uh, and to know when you're being lied to and weakness is being whispered in your ear like worm tongue. Of course, if if World War Three breaks out, so I think by that point I'll just I'll just be going on another holiday. I feel, um, you know, I'll be tasteful about it as much as I can. But you know, at the end of the day, I I'm not just fearing these things. I'm not having a small breakdown. It's just normal for me. It's bizarre. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing to have, though, but you never know the long-term effects it might have. Yeah. Uh, frankly, I do think World War Three has broken out, but it's more of... It's, it's long and drawn a, out. Yeah, hopefully it's more of a second Cold War or something, but it's pretty brutal what's happening, and the implications are brutal, and there's lots of um, potential highly dangerous things, and I suppose it's all very exciting. I wish... It's just a bit much, though, when there's... A bit much. I mean, and people are getting slaughtered, so you can't take it lightly, either. You know, you can, it's yeah. happening, so there's nothing you can do, so you just you do your own thing anyways, and yeah, I'm That's thinking fun. the same thing with um, Taiwan if something breaks off over there. Because this would be the perfect opportunity whilst the whole world is distracted by Ukraine. Uh, Russia can do rapid expansion and then suddenly, um, you know, um, China can just take over if they have the means to. I'm not too sure too much on the situation, but, you know, it would be a power play by their part. And 
you know, um, that could create World War Three. I mean, if it happens, it's going to be either incredibly quick, like you said, with nuclear war, or it's going to be incredibly drawn out and painful and a slow, painful death, and then all out nukes, then everyone loses. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's difficult, very difficult path. But anyways, that's the way things are. Yeah, can't worry about well, it too much. Hopefully, hopefully somehow it doesn't reach. That's the main thing I don't want it to is reach the nuclear. Nuclear stage. I mean, that would well, just be so part, insane. Well, what um, what's your location, mate? Ireland. Oh, you'll be fine, man. They're neutral of everything. <laughs> you'll be good. Yeah, um, come on. Once it, the be, we'll have a nuclear winter once the rest, the, rest, yeah, the UK and Western Europe is nuked. Oh, you'll still be able sure. to. I, I, read, I, read, I looked up. I looked up the safer places to be. Uh, I'm actually from Canada, so the Yukon in Canada is a is a safer place, and Iceland and like Perth, Australia, are three of the probably best locations to be if. If that happens, but I mean, everyone's going to still. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, Australia's going to be fine. I think you know, no one has beef with Australia too much. Um, but right. with when it, when it comes to uh, Greenland and Iceland, uh, issue is they they mostly import most of their food. So uh, especially in a globalized world, if something does break out, you'll see massive shortages because in World War One, everything was made locally to some degree, right? And then yeah. some substitution from uh, you know the US to Europe. If World War Three breaks out, we're screwed for food. Absolutely. Like all, yeah. all many resources absolutely shattered. Um, we won't have anything. That's why in wow. my home back in back in Loughborough, the United Kingdom, I've got you know um, I've got about fifty liters of water, which isn't that much, but you know in bottles, and I've got all these filtration systems, and I've got this food growing kit, and I've got all this dried food and cans and meats and everything. Oh, yeah. Do you hear that? I I might have heard that. Yeah, it's very faintly. Yeah, is it close? Yeah, it's going off the uh, the sirens, so uh, this ain't good for bunker, basically. Oh, are you gonna go? Nah, you... I I don't care what the bunker is around here. Okay. You know, um, they knock on my door. They go, oh, come with, come with. I'm, like, I'm sleeping. You know? Are you on the first floor or? Um, I think so. yeah, 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 first floor. Yeah, yeah it's probably the best. Yeah, so um, I think they've got a bunker a little while away, or you can just run to the metro station, which is, I would say, about three hundred meters from here. You go underground if you knock four times on a metal barricade. They've got these huge metal gates um, that only open from the inside from Soviet times. So if you knock them in four times, they'll um, they'll let you in. Um, yeah. And then you can just chill underground. They've got these whole little micro communities. It's basically Metro Twenty Thirty Three if you know the game. Um, honestly, sounds yes, like, they've uh, got... it sounds like the future from the Terminator or something. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow they've managed to set up tents whilst in the actual train station. So they've just got a hammer into the tiles and stuck it in, which I think is bizarrely amazing, but, you know, anything for privacy, I guess. And yeah, what are they? Do they have little hibachis? Are they cooking little fires and cooking the Yeah, food seriously, and... yeah. I mean, um, they're doing it separately. They've designated a certain area because of the smoke and everything, and there's some vents. Um, so this, I haven't commented about this on social media, but there's loads of photos going around saying, oh, this, uh, this artillery piece, this missile hasn't gone off. It's in, mid in the middle of the ground in Kharkiv or, uh, or um, Kiev or something. But these are the vents that actually hold um, and vent all the actual heat from the underground. And they have fins on them to dissipate heat quickly. But for some reason, they look like a missile that's already gone into the ground. So the Western media is mistaking it for a missile. And it's like, it's like 50 in every city. So people are like, wow, so many missiles are just duds. It uh, once again, once again, the failure. Our yeah. failure. I saw media. one person see, you know, the uh, steam coming out because it's a vent. And they go, "Wow, it's smoking! It might go off any second. <laughs> no. <laughs> they need they need your calm attitude, like, oh, whatever, yeah, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, but so Ukraine is like the breadbasket. Is it the breadbasket of the world? Is that what they call it, or Europe or something? Some degree, yeah. Famous. It's got loads. Yeah, loads yeah, of loads, fertile land. Loads of like very rich black soil and uh, incredibly fertile. And I already saw there was I saw some uh, articles anyway saying. It's going to affect, you know, grain, wheat exports to places like was it Egypt or something, and uh, you know, Europe as well. will feel there'll be a food food shortage issue, maybe just related, just even to what's happened already related to that. There could be maybe something. I mean, I don't I mean, know. Yeah, early 1900s they had an epidemic, and then they also had uh, price uh, inflations, um, and then they also had you know a war that started as a small regional conflict and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, you never know, we might be repeating history. Um, because I've already had inflation due to COVID and all the, pre all the uh, BS of 
printing money. Um, I'm not too sure if it's the same in Ireland, but you know, things have gotten massively in the UK by like 40%, I've noticed. Most yeah. people haven't noticed, but I have. And if it goes up further due to supply chain issues with Ukraine, I would be absolutely pissed. Yeah, and that was cause begin to start sort of breakdowns and like, you know, working class people kind of rising up or something, I think, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, would it, will it not? <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Think. I think I, if I we have a war in the UK, like a little civil conflict um, with you know, neighboring countries or with ourselves, I think that's going to be entertaining. But, uh, <laughs> you know, because right, so. yeah, yeah, I know I actually have a, yeah, a reason to fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, like the so how does this compare to um, Afghanistan, we'd say, in mm. the in the excitement levels, the or <laughs> yeah. excitement is the word, whatever the. Yeah, I would say this is more suspenseful to some degree. So with the Taliban, they came in on trucks. They were loudly announcing their presence. It was very obvious, you know, you knew what they were, who they were, stuff like this. To me, Ukrainians and Russians look exactly the same. It's a brother's war, basically, you know. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell them apart, that's for sure. I know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't know who's who sometimes, and that kind of confuses me. Once I ran up to a, I ran up to a Russian, asked him, and he spoke Russian. I was like, oh, sorry, mate, press, <laughs> going the opposite direction. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then uh, you don't actually know when the bombardment's going to come. You hear the uh, sirens, but you hear the whoosh go over your head. And then you run behind the bed, you get like two seconds, three seconds warning. But with the Taliban, you know, you, you knew when it was coming, you could easily spot them and identify it. But here, it's almost like there's a hidden enemy um, just coming out of nowhere. So I, I can see someone really getting paranoid in these situations, um, really getting scared because any noise just sets them off and it can come out of nowhere. At least with yeah. you know, hunter-gatherer times, you could actually predict uh, what's happening. There wasn't a missile about to slam you in the face in the middle of the night. But here, yeah. uh, you know, wars become a lot more terrifying for some people. Well, even you were saying a minute ago, history is going to repeat itself. I mean, that's, it is maybe similar to the events around that time, except we have nukes. So we can't really afford to let ourselves go as we did yeah. before. <laughs> we have to be a little bit more measured. That's the, that's the problem. Also, yeah, when you brought up, I was going to ask you earlier, you were talking about women. I know it's not and the most opportune thing, but it just occurred to me that uh, not, perhaps this is in poor taste, but, uh, you know, uh, the Ukrainian girls are legendary and I don't suppose in the war zone, you're seeing a lot of them running around. Yeah, look, there's, around. there's tons different. of them. They're all in uniform too, which is great. When I was with the soldiers, I slept on the AstroTurf of the shooting range and the ground. And then I woke up and I was like two Ukrainian soldiers next to me just sleeping on their, uh, you know, their little makeshift beds. And when I got up and they were, you know, they, they were still sleeping about four. Or so Ukrainian women walked in and all the men were with them too, but they were just straight up blonde six foot, you know, they, they were nice. You know, I've got to admit I'm Catholic and I'm not going to go there, but they were good looking. They were better than British women or American women. You know. uh, um, and they were like, oh, do you want me bring you? Yeah, they were offering me breakfast in bed. Like I just, you know, it was our marriage night or something. <laughs> they were like, oh, we'll bring you, we'll bring you food. You want something, you know, anything. And I was like, marriage, maybe, you know, you come for West. You know, we can sort something out if you're Catholic. Excellent. Um, oh, you're really, you're really very Catholic. Yeah. Well, that's. Yeah. I, if, if they were Catholic and were like, you know, um, we can figure something else out. I'll cook for you, and maybe we can like each other in the future. I'll be like, yeah, I don't care. Let's do it. Well, you wouldn't be plagued by some of the. I mean, you're going to be very lucky to find one who is going to cook for you in Britain, or you know, do the normal. Um, yeah, gender role well, you can't thing. cook food in Britain, sadly. It's even <laughs> law. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit hard. Yeah. It's a bit difficult. Like, yeah, yeah. I was eating the. Um, so we basically grew up. Um, I, I don't know the name of it, but there's canned chicken where the chicken's made in island um also not island um by the amish by the amish so i'm a bit tired it's been war you know um right, yeah. yeah but they basically got a chicken or, or turkey and just stuffed it into a can it's maybe of the amish so it's not you know it hasn't got gmos or any steroids or whatever yeah. and then they've canned it and sent it to the front lines so when i posted those photos online everyone's going oh canned chicken that sounds disgusting miles how are you surviving that terrible food i was like this is better than any food served in britain ever <laughs> it's it's nice well no, i'm glad um, you're being honest because yeah i've had, had that experience myself in fact i remember there's a famous line and uh there's a good there's actually it's british the uh the uh show about casanova and um, at one point he says things that don't make sense what's he talking about what's he talking about it's like he said he compared he, did, he compared the different people of europe to, and having them like as in uh working for you and what was 
who was best at what. And he was like, it's like, it's like having a British person as a cook. As, <laughs> you know, yeah, I've always remembered that and thought of it. And like, yes, it's kind of true, even though I'm half British and, you know. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, it's like, um, you can get good food and people do it well. And like a lot of people are going to get angry about this now, but it's more or less true. There's a lot of bad. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Compared to like France or Italy or, oh. you know. I, mean, I, I went to Italy on um, a few years back, just like for a holiday, you know. Um, I saved up 150 pounds, uh, you know, roughly $200 for American watches. And, um, you know, I flew down for um, a flight that was about $9, nine pounds roughly. And when I arrived, it was 11 p.m. So I was like, oh, everything's going to be closed, you know. And I walked around and it got to roughly around 1 a.m. And there were still shops and uh, restaurants open at 1 a.m., um, just serving ice cream too, just ice cream shops, ice cream vans. And I was like, okay, I'll go to this random ghetto looking shop. I'll maybe get some passable food. And it was the best food I've ever tried <laughs> compared to anything in the UK. And when I was like, wow, I must travel. I must find good food. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it is it is an amazing, uh, one of the best things in life, really. Yeah, but um, um, I so, do want to retire in Italy someday, hopefully. Yeah, you won't get as much danger out of it. Well, you could, I could go to maybe some, get the mafia to chase you or something, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, all, I'm maybe, Europe's gonna, maybe all of Europe will soon be a danger zone like this. Who knows? I mean, hopefully not. I mean, we have to hope in all this. I mean, we're we this is like U, Ukraine plus British cuisine, but uh, it should be slightly well, off topic. But yeah. it, like, we do hope that the whole thing. I hope that it's there's a peaceful solution found soon, and it de-escalates, and that you're safe, that you get out safely. Thank your, you. Yeah. Well, Europe's already I, under an invasion, but not by uh, the Russians anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, Europe, I mean, <laughs> Western Europe is all but lost, to be honest, as, as it was. I mean, hopefully it kind of reforms somehow mm. something, parts of it at least. But I mean, those of us who are realists know that it's kind of a lost cause. But anyways. Yeah, exactly. We have to start to ignore Israel, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are the chances of you doing the thing where you're going to be walking and sleeping out on the road? Is that for sure you're doing that? I think for sure, yeah. Unless if someone literally goes, hey, look, we've got space here. There's no one else behind us who wants it. It's free. I'll be like, well, if there's no one else taking it, I'm not taking it from anyone. And I guess yeah. I'll do it. But yeah. that's not going to happen most likely. You know, it's going to be jam-packed. There's massive uh, queues. So, so I've been looking at uh, Google traffic data and basically there's like a jam-packed amount of cars on the border at all times. So I'm going to have to be walking for sure. Yeah, well, good luck anyways. and. Um... I think I need it. <laughs> are, are you are you video are you videoing yourself? Are you keeping a vlog or whatever? Oh yeah. Know? So um, I yeah. post to YouTube the entertaining things. Um, like some interactions I can't film unfortunately, <laughs> mostly because they won't let me. If I could sneak the camera, I would. But you know, I don't want I don't want a rifle hit, hitting me on the side of the head. You know, being a bit naughty, a little bit cheeky. So um, I film as much as I can. Um, if you just Google my name. Followed by YouTube, it'll come up. Um, yeah, and there's yeah. some 20 minute schizo, schizo posts on there about uh, certain things going on. I, my live streams are posted too. So when the Ukrainian forces stormed me and told me to you know, surrender and all this other stuff, that was on camera. <laughs> Fortunately, okay, I had yeah, a field day yeah. with that. Oh, yeah, I have to look at that. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll have more adventures before you out of there. So that's, thank you. Uh, well, I do have some more plans as well for um, different regions and you know, different countries as well at some point. I'll go back to Afghanistan this year, I feel. Well, yeah. Yeah, I've literally yeah, got the Taliban on Twitter and on uh, WhatsApp still. Like, I just DM them and they can get me a media visa, maybe. Because they like your they like your coverage of their... They, yeah, because their, yeah, yeah. They, they accept Western people to go there. They go, hey, you got to say good stuff about us, right? And they go, yeah. And then West just screws them over going, oh, these are terrible people, uh, you know, mm. blah, blah, blah. And the Taliban watching and go, well, we just fed the and homed these people, kind of annoying. But then I just go there, uh, you know, on a whim. I, I I experienced the worst part of it, which was, you know, the takeover of Kabul, you know, a war. And then I say only good things. And they're like, wait, we like this guy. He can say good stuff about Afghanistan and don't let me yeah. in no matter what I feel. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to go there too. So I'll go with you when you. Yeah, please do. <laughs> we'll have like a little group tour. We'll um, wear Hawaiian t-shirts, disposable cameras, um, be, yeah. be typical tourists or yeah. vets. I'll, pro I'll probably get shot or something. Yeah, but yeah, I don't have well, your luck. I don't have. I don't have the Lord's luck. Let's say. But uh, <laughs> awesome. yeah, well, so that's. I think I've kept you long enough. That was very interesting, and um, you dropped a lot of truth bombs. And um, like, like I said, I hope you survive. I'm sure you will. I think you've. We'll got see. We'll see. 
you know, yeah. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to rule it out. But uh, you know, if I get home to Red Mist, uh, at least I ship hosted the hardest I could, and that's all that matters. Right. Well, I mean, Godspeed, and uh, we hope for the best for the people of Ukraine and for the conflict to somehow somehow resolve mm. as soon as possible. Yeah, I hope everyone stays safe as well, apart from me anyway. Um, and I wish everyone the best, and also thanks for having me on, mate. Yeah, well, thanks for, thanks for doing it. Thank and, you. Um, all right, and uh, we'll talk to you later, Miles. See you, mate. See ya. Goodbye.